So Morgan Cristo, you grew up here in San Angelo and you returned to your hometown after graduating from Texas A&M, mm -hmm. Gigham. Yes. <laughs> what brought you back to San Angelo? Well, um, albeit not under the best of circumstances, I came back because an uncle of mine that I love very dearly was in a freak accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down. And he was actually the one that got me started singing and we had always had a very close bond. And so when he got hurt, I knew that I didn't like being the satellite family member living down in Houston, working downtown and doing that. So I decided I wanted to come back to San Angelo to be closer to family for that time and with full intention of moving back. <laughs> and, but then I met my husband and not even a year later we got married and the rest is history. But it, it ended up being the best decision I ever made and I'm so glad that I did. At the time, was it hard sort of giving up your life in, in Houston to come back to San Angelo? Because usually young people want to want to stay there to the big city. Um, given the relationship that I had with my uncle, it was the easiest decision to make. I was so glad that I was able to be back w with him during the final years of his life. And uh, like I say, if I had to do it all over again, I'd make the same decision. So another potentially tough decision, mm -hmm. you mentioned your husband, who is former 20 under 40 honoree mm -hmm. Lenny Cristo, and he said in his nomination of you that you were on track to become a partner at a local accounting firm before you decided to step away from that. Mm -hmm. So talk about what led to that decision. Yes, um, so when I graduated from a and I got my bachelor's and master's in accounting and also received my CPA certification. And so when I started my career, I had full intentions of becoming a partner. I knew that that's the track I wanted to be on. And then life has a way of changing things for you. And so, because at the time when I graduated, I was single, but then when Lenny and I got married and had kids, that little boy <laughs> changed this mama's heart a lot. And so my son was the biggest reason that I stepped away from public accounting. Again, not anything I would ever change. And now that I have been able to be home with my son and now our daughter as well, it has been the best decision for our family. But I do believe that my time in public accounting and the education that I got has been invaluable for what I'm doing now. But it was, like I say, it was, it was a sort of a hard decision, but at the same time, the easiest as well. So talk about what you're doing now professionally. Yes, so now I work for a company called Ever Skincare, and I'm a representative for our beauty brand. We are a clean beauty brand that offers you clinical grade results with all good for you ingredients. So the clean beauty movement is such a huge movement right now um, with the within the population of people wanting to see results, but they want they don't want it at the cost. They don't want to have um, harsh chemicals or be putting anything any toxins onto their skin. So Ever took that idea and said, we still want to see results, but we also want to give it to you in a way that you can feel good about what you're putting on your skin. They also have a mission of empowering women to take care of themselves and to value themselves. And for me, when I started out with Ever. I actually was introduced to it by my sister who works for our sister company and she said you should try this this is it's a great product and I said okay but I'm never gonna sell it so don't even try to get me on there and two days later I ate a lot of crow because I saw how great my skin looked and fast forward two and a half years and I've been the top sales person for ever skincare in the nation two years running and I'm so proud of the company of what the company has built we provide beautiful skincare and makeup for women and but more than that what I like is that I've been able to give women a confidence that they may have lost I think a lot of times when women enter into motherhood and um, into or maybe not even into mother but other motherhood but into the grind of going to work every day and kind of putting themselves on the back burner showing them that they are worth taking care of and restoring that confidence that they may have lost has been such a pleasure for me and it is a true passion of mine and I am feel very fortunate to be able to give that to other women. Well, it's easy to see that you feel passionate about this and yet you said you were surprised that you were selected as one of this year's <laughs> honorees because you don't have a quote 
unquote traditional job. Yes, yes, I was, I was very surprised by it. I think that there is still such a misconception of what direct sales really is and what it can provide for families. And I think that there is definitely, there is a shift and I think a lot of people are seeing it in the workplace nowadays that the traditional job, the nine to five grind isn't necessarily what's best for all families and it certainly wasn't the best for ours and I'm so glad that I was able that I took a chance and I decided to bet on myself and go into this type of profession and so but again I feel like it's oftentimes misunderstood and so when they informed me that I was one of the honorees I was taken aback but also so excited to see that the efforts and the um, the shift in the in the workplace is being recognized now, you are also a member of the Junior League of San Angelo. Yes, you served as its treasurer and as a board member. What do you like about the Junior League and the service that it provides to our community? Well, as you mentioned before, a huge passion of mine is helping women and children. And so Junior League plays perfectly into that. When I came back to San Angelo, the, uh, I knew that I wanted to get involved because volunteering and community service was something that I hold a very high regard and so I thought that the Junior League was the best way to do that plus get to know new people and when I joined I had no idea what it would bring to my life I really thought that it'd just be another leader or volunteer opportunity and just another community service organization but really it has just enriched my life so much it's allowed for me to volunteer and help other women and children and it's just it's one of my favorite things that I do. So is there a specific junior league project that you feel like has uh, moved and inspired you in some way? There's two <laughs> and I, re I really I can't narrow it down to just one. We have recently now moved this away from the junior league because this, this is what junior league does is they start projects and they get them going but then they pass it off within the community to keep running and then we start new projects and we just recently passed this off but the food to kids program is something that I absolutely love and have a huge heart for. I um, was blessed to grow up in a financial situation that I was not aware of how many students in the San Angelo and community and surrounding communities were on free or reduced lunch programs. And it's about two thirds of kids yes, locally. Yes, and it's, it totally took me by surprise and hearing the statistics and understanding that these children, when they go home after school, they don't have anything to eat. And over the weekends, they don't have anything. And so being able to pack those lunches and those backpacks for those kids, and they do it with the utmost discretion so that they never feel um, out of place, it was just such, it made such a difference in my life. Because like I say, I was, I was unaware of, and I'm so glad that I am now aware of it. And so Food to Kids was a huge, um, was a, definitely the project that really impacted me a lot. But also most recently, last year, we joined up with the Rainbow Room and provided what we called Hope Totes. And what this is, is for when children are taken in emergency situations out of homes and placed, a lot of times they're just placed into intermediary, positions and they don't and it's taken a lot of times they're taken in the middle of the night or and they don't have they may either don't have it or they don't have the time to gather just the basic necessities and you're talking about child, child protective yes, services child protective services yes and so when um, we started a thing a project last year and what we did was we took these bags um, and we pro we filled them all with toiletries, towels, a pillow, you know, things that you and I would take for granted that we would never think about. And they are now given to each of these children when they have to be taken in emergency situations with Child Protective Services. And it gives them a comfort of home. It gives them something that they know that is theirs so that they can have that little, that small bit of security. And when we took those hope totes to the Rainbow Room this year, to see the faces of the people that worked there, they just had no idea. And watching that and being a part of that and being on the board that year when we did it, it just, I, it was one of those moments in my life where I really felt like 
we, we just made a difference. We really did. Now, you have also served as director of the Hospice of San Angelo Foundation. How and why did you become involved in that organization? Well, it, that one was more just a, um, you know, when you're an accountant, you always get asked to be the treasurer. <laughs> so that's really actually kind of how it started, but I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of it. My grandmother, when she passed away, was on hospice, and I've known um, many people that have been uh, blessed to have received those services during the, their most vulnerable and last hours of their life. And um, so I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of it, it albeit in a kind of a weird way of getting in of just, hey, can you be the treasurer? We need one. <laughs> but um, it was, again, something that I love and um, an organization that I'm very proud to have represented. Now, when you were involved with that nonprofit, it merged with yes. West Texas Rehab Center. Was that a difficult decision to make, uh, to have your entity sort of join forces with another? Absolutely not, because <laughs> I'm, I seem to, as we talk about this, I realize I'm, I'm very connected with a lot of organizations in town, but West Texas Rehab also holds a very near and dear place to my heart. My son was actually had a speech delay when he was um, two years old, and the people at West Texas Rehab made me feel like everything was going to be okay, and they really helped my husband and I through one of the most difficult times to date as parents and feeling like we didn't know what was what was wrong and how we could help and so west texas rehab was just so instrumental in that and i knew and when their board came to us and explained how they had recently done this in abilene and that they are taking care of children and elderly for, sometimes all the way from the bottom all the way up you know that i knew that the hospice would fit perfectly into that i knew that it was being it was being absorbed by a organization that cared immensely about people and for me I just knew that why not why wouldn't you want to combine two incredible organizations and make them that much stronger. Now you mentioned a little bit earlier about singing and mm -hmm. uh, many people may recognize you as someone who has sung the national anthem at the uh, San Angelo Rodeo many times. So in addition to being a talented singer you are a CrossFit enthusiast and an avid calligrapher. Mm -hmm. So why do you think it's important that people have those sort of outside interest in addition to their professional endeavors and their civic volunteerism to sort of keep them balanced? You know, I think that that's always important because a lot of times your passions uh, often will align with what you do professionally, but sometimes you have those that don't. And I think that for me, I've always been extremely artistic. And so all of my passions that they do play a part of who I am and they make me who I am, but they aren't necessarily what I do professionally speaking. And so for me, it allows by continuing to sing um, civically and beyond and um, to CrossFit because I love taking care of myself and um, because I think that it's so important to be active and showing my kids that example. And then calligraphy is just, like I say, another artistic way of, ex of expression. And for me, it's helped when I am a little bit stressed out, because <laughs> that happens from time to time, being a mother of two young, two littles and taking care of that husband of mine. It's like having a third kid sometimes, you know. <laughs> um, that has, that's, those are my times. You know, that's my me time of where I can step away, and I think that's so important for everyone. Um, you always, and never give up on your dreams and your passions, and so that's why I enjoy keeping that a part of my life. So of all your pastimes, is there one that you're most particularly fond of? singing <laughs> far and away singing um i was recently went to nashville and it re sparked that I, I, it's not that it ever went away but going to nashville and and hearing the country live country music it just got me so excited i actually went home and bought a guitar a little impulsive but that's okay uh, i went home and bought a guitar and i just i love singing it's something that when i sing i go into a it's just like a whole nother state <laughs> and I enjoy it so much and it's a God-given talent, no question. Um, there is no musical history in my family. So it's something that I want, I feel like it is. it was given to me by the Lord and I want to continue to spread it to others so that they can hear his talents that he bestowed upon me. So Morgan, how do you define leadership? Leadership to me, I believe, is a two-prong approach. 
Leadership comes from servanthood and passion. And when these two things align, leaders naturally emerge from it. I was blessed to grow up in a family where both my mother and father were incredibly involved, um, both with community, within community service projects, but also within our church, at my school, my, mine and my sister's schools. And so growing up like that, I was taught that giving back wasn't something that you do out of obligation. It's something that is a privilege. And so I felt honored to start um, giving back and volunteering. I actually started in the sixth grade. I was a candy striper and went all the way through high school and college and into my adult life. Like I say, it is an honor to give back and to serve those around me and to serve our community. And when that servanthood and my passions for giving back to and helping women and children, when those two things align, it was easy to become a leader in that because I am so passionate about and enthusiastic about sharing this with others and I want to lead others to feeling better and to restoring their confidence and giving them the things that I was so blessed to have and let me be that vessel to bring that to them as well. Is there a particular leader that you feel like has inspired or shaped who you are? You know, I have a couple. <laughs> I, I, of course, like I mentioned before, my parents uh, were hugely in instrumental in my life. Um, I've watched my sister do the same. She followed in my parents' footsteps. My brother-in-law, of course, my husband, who is incredibly involved. But I would be remiss not to mention my mentor. His name is Mike Lohner, and he is the president of the board of directors for Ever Skin Care. And albeit we met through Ever, he actually um, has become my mentor in life because he is someone that values, he studies and values happiness above all and, and enjoying your life and making others around you feel emboldened and powerful and that they can, do, they can achieve anything. And with, be, through all of those people, I've been able to do the things that I have, and I'm so grateful. So as I mentioned, and you've mentioned a couple of times, your husband, Lenny Christo, mm -hmm. was a former 20 under 40 honoree. And uh, those of us who know Lenny know he is an energetic and enthusiastic <laughs> and an excitable guy. So who do you think he was more excited, or what he was more excited about, his selection or yours? I have to say, definitely mine. Um, <laughs> when I called him, he almost, well, he'd hate that I say this, but he definitely started crying. <laughs> he's, he's a very passionate man. And um, he was so excited, and I kept saying, I just don't understand. I, I didn't expect this. And he said, well, if, I knew that you deserve this, and this is something that you should be recognized for, and it is an honor to show and others that this is what you do for not only for our family but for our community and he was just so excited so excited now you mentioned your parents a couple of times for those who don't know mm -hmm. your dad is dr brian may mm -hmm. the president of angelo state university yes. so what did he have to say about this you know my dad <laughs> in the classic brian may way said to me well baby <laughs> I knew you were great. I didn't need any, I didn't need an award to tell me, but he also, of course, said, but it is so nice to see you honored because he said, I wouldn't be the man that I am today if it weren't for my incredible family surrounding me. And so he was incredibly gracious and so excited. Like I say, like I said with Lenny, he was definitely, he's never shown the excitement level for anything that he's ever received like he did for this. So I'm, again, incredibly blessed to be surrounded by such amazing people in my life. Morgan Christo, congratulations on being one of this year's 20 under 40. Thank you so much.